I'm grateful to Dr. David Nye for joining us again on our channel. Welcome back. Thank you. The last time we spoke about CRP, the C-reactive protein, that is a marker for inflammation. Mm. Um, I, I'd like to understand what are the symptoms of inflammation? Well, we first of all got to understand the two kinds of inflammation. You get the acute inflammation, which is life-saving. Um, when you bump a toe, it's going to get sore, it's going to get red, it's going to get swollen, and it then settles down after a few days. And that's what we call acute inflammation. And it's the body releasing all the whole inflammatory cascade of chemicals and hormones which help the body to heal. The problem arises with what we call silent inflammation. This is like a chronic inflammation where the inflammation process doesn't get the signals to slow down and heal. And often due to ongoing stress or other lifestyle factors, the inflammation carries on and on and on in the body. And then you don't usually get the obvious symptoms of the redness and the pain and the swelling mm -hmm. and the throbbing. Um, silent inflammation can take on so many forms in the body. And silent inflammation can be responsible for so many conditions like depression, um, asthma, eczema, arthritis, um, even obesity. All these things can yeah. be linked to, to silent inflammation. So it's a very important underlying condition which uh, we need to be aware of. You scared me last time when you spoke about inflammation mm -hmm. and stress causing heart disease can cause a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And that is far more serious than cholesterol level. Exactly. So when you look at the, the inflammatory process in the body, how would you possibly know that you have silent in inflammation just by its very name? Um, there are a number of clinical clues that one can look at. Mm -hmm. if, you, if your waist circumference is bigger than the, the norm, if you're getting a bit of... Um, middle age spread, um, if you're suffering with tiredness or lethargy or fatigue or muscle pains, um, joint pains, um, so many vague symptoms which in conventional medicine often aren't pinned to any particular mm. diagnosis uh, will often indicate that there's some silent inflammation going on. And that could be backed up with some blood tests. Okay, so you, how often would you recommend people test for um, the CRP level? Uh, very often, particularly if somebody has um, a lot of lifestyle factors which might put them at risk for a heart attack, um, one of the tests we would do is to do an ultra-sensitive CRP, which is different to the ordinary CRP because it's much more sensitive and can pick up inflammation in the arteries. So with normal CRP, you won't pick it up in the arteries? Normal CRP is not quite so sensitive. It'll pick up inflammation in the body generally. So if you've got arthritis or uh, asthma, you might have a raised CRP, mm -hmm. but um, it's it's not as sensitive as the ultra-sensitive CRP. So you could have a patient with with asthma and silent inflammation, but you wouldn't know because the CRP is, is raised anyway. Yes. So, so that's when you would do the other, other indicators that we would look at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything one can do nutritionally and with supplementation or certain herbal extracts to Absolutely. calm down inflammation. Yeah, there's a lot that one can do. Nutrition always is so important for dealing with any kind of lifestyle thing. We need to avoid foods that are going to, that we know are generally going to cause inflammation. Such as? Things like um, gluten often causes a lot of inflammation, <clears throat> refined starches, refined carbs. Um, what the refined carbs do is they trigger the release of insulin and insulin is a big factor in stimulating uh, uh, inflammatory factors in the body, formation of arachnidonic acid, which is a very inflammatory prostaglandin. Mm -hmm. um, other things that uh, are commonly uh, inflammatory are, are sugars, um, refined seed oils like uh, sunflower seed and canola oils. They're very refined. They are very um, chemically processed. And what happens is they stimulate the pathways in the body, which are going to favor inflammation. So a lot of those sort of general lifestyle things uh, would be applicable to everybody. And then if somebody really has a problem with inflammation, we often look at what individual foods might be causing inflammation. Mm -hmm. One can do blood tests to measure the IgG level, 
which is so a way of a testing food intolerance. In, that's an intolerance, mm. not a sensitivity. Well, terminology is a bit confusing. We talk mm. about food allergy, which uses an IgE mechanism, and we talk about an IgG, which measures a sensitivity or an intolerance. And the sensitivities or intolerance are far more relevant to chronic inflammation and chronic illness. So you already can do a lot with diet. Absolutely. And then supplementation to, to acutely attack, like on an orthomolecular level, is there something you can take? There are many supplements, a lot of them herbal, that one can use, which are very potent anti-inflammatories. Things like curcumin from turmeric, um, ginger, uh, omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil. Um, would cayenne pepper be something? Cayenne pepper as well, certainly works on a different mm -hmm. pathway. So uh, boswellia is another one right. uh, from frankincense. So right. there are many different anti-inflammatories in the natural world. And the natural um, products to reduce stress levels would go hand in hand. So your ashwagandha probably would be really good. Sure. And would um, bioflavonoids have a role to play absolutely. in reducing Absolutely, and we should be getting a lot of bioflavonoids from our food if we're eating a lot of um, deeply pigmented fruits, berries, vegetables. Your red, your dark, be colored the dark ones, yeah. Then we should be getting a lot of bioflavonoids. We shouldn't need to supplement with those things. Those are things we should be getting from the anyway. diet. Anyway. Mm.